The new theory proposes a guideline for land management on a moderate size of plot, around 10 to 15 rye, to ensure sufficient food all year round. The difficulty in of such land management system lies mainly in the ways and means to divide the plot of land according to purposes of utilization. The solution has been found in His Majesty's theory gives priority to water resources for farming as the key issue. By this theory, the 15 rye experiment plot of land was divided into four sections, whereby a plot of five rye was set aside for rice cultivation, five rye for multiple crop cultivation, three rye for a farm pond, and the remaining two rye for accommodation and other activities. Starvation is the primary indication of poverty. For a Thai to be starved means not having enough rice to eat. To own land for rice cultivation, therefore, constitutes a fundamental security against starvation. According to His Majesty's calculations, the five rye plot of land is capable of producing rice for year-round consumption of a family of five to six members. The further five rye of land set aside for multiple crops cultivation to produce food for household consumption. It also ensures sufficient income for the living earned through the sale of surplus produce. Implementation of the integrated farming theory can be designed of taking into consideration the terrain, the size of water supply and the crop species befitting their locality. Mr. Plien Wongchai, a Muno farmer from Takbai district, Naratiwat province, applied His Majesty's new theory to his multi-crops farms. These include organic gardening, whereby produce is consumed at home as well as marketed for additional income. It required some thinking too, my own thinking that is, for example, what to plant today, what to sell at the marketplace. We have to study the market, right? We have to pay special attention to the market demand and concentrate on it. My produce is even exported to Malaysia, that hauled in an income of 35 baht a kilo. Cloudy skies normally promise rainfall, a source of life for vegetations and creatures alike. However, given the fact that the rainy season only lasts a few months, coupled with the unpredictable changes in climate pattern, the skies with no rain clouds can also bring on starvation and famine. Thus, those whose living relies on water must reserve water to ensure sufficient supply. At the new theory experiment station, 30% of land is set aside for rainwater storage. A new experiment went underway when His Majesty used his personal fund to acquire an additional plot of land. This time the experiment is focused on pond digging. It was His Majesty's initiation to set aside rich topsoil for cultivation at the first phase. Then the soil obtained from deeper digging should be used as filling material on paths around the house to raise the beds of crops or for irrigation purposes, which proved very useful in low-lying marshy areas prone to flooding. At the final stage is to spread the topsoil being set aside in the first phase over areas to be cultivated. Water being stored in the farm pond is designed as a reserve for consumption only in times of drought or after long intervals between rains. Nevertheless, utilization of reserved water can be increased through fish raising or water plant growing for food by digging two separate ponds, since a pond to raise fish requires a different technique. A pond that contains steep sides is not suitable as the fish have to swim all night in such a pond, no spot to rest. For tapion and nil fishes, there must be a slope around the edge of the pond for them to nestle in, while some other fishes nestle in a hole, especially to lay their eggs. A pond with steep sides causes the fish to have stiff necks because of the swim round the clock and no time to rest. 
To suit the locality, some farm ponds can lie between raised beds of crops or even right in the middle of paddy field. The main idea is to store water for use in the dry season. Given the large number of farmers who opt for digging ponds to restore water for their farming, it turned out that these farm ponds serve as replacements for the natural waterways that dried up or were filled up earlier. At the same time, the hardship after flooding can, to a certain extent, be eased, as farmers have plenty of water stored in their individual ponds, which can be used to rescue their crops later. It is the very object of the new theory. The hard fact is that in a country like this country, water is plentiful or even excessive at some periods that it sometimes creates floods that brings miseries, destroys the cultivated plants, causing them to die and rot. After that, after all that water is drained out at the cost of great efforts and expenses, drought will set in, so no cultivation is possible. Then famine and poverty will prevail.